So we're very happy to be with you here today. And as Sarah mentioned, we were working on a research about Ufi and Freire and about popular schools in Denmark and in Brazil. We have studied some, uh, we, we did some case studies on that and that's what we will be presenting today. As Sarah mentioned, we have published some of our findings in an ebook format. Uh, some of it is in English, most of, it, most of it is in English, but the whole book is in Portuguese. And I've sent you the link in, in the chat if you'd like to download it and have a look. As Sarah mentioned, we also have the introductory part in Danish, and we'll see if we can get some other translations. And if we do, we will also share it with you. Um, so for today, we thought we would start with a little bit of Paulo Freire, because we imagine that many of you would be from different countries or different regions of the world, and maybe you would like to get to know him a little bit more. And Sergio here with me today is our great specialist in Brazil about Paulo Freire. And um, he recently wrote a biography on Paulo Freire. I will share it with you the link for the book later if you'd like to know it, but it's this one is in Portuguese and we also have a Spanish translation, right, Sergio? And yeah. if we eventually get an English or different language translation, we'll we'll like to share it with you too. But um, so far we have it in Portuguese and in Spanish. And I would like to ask Sergio to talk a little bit about Paulo Freire. Then last year was his 100th birthday celebration. So we have this uh, special website where we published lots of articles and reported some events uh, that we that we had last year online events about Paulo Freire. I'll share with you the link on the chat as well. Sergio, please. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm very happy to stay here. And I would like to say thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a big challenge for us to, to make the research uh, because it's a quite different language and in the same time, uh, reality is so different and, but uh, we, and a big challenge as well to translate all the finds in some, uh, a small number of slides in this uh, presentation. Well, Paulo Freire is a, is a Brazilian educator, uh, born in 1921, and he is uh, the most important educator in Brazil. Is uh, and in some parts of Latin America and the other parts of the world. Uh, Paulo Freire in last year, we celebrated the centenary of the born of Paulo Freire in the last year, and a lot of uh, different uh, videos and publications and lives, and uh, we celebrated together with people from Latin America and other parts of the world. We will start by a small piece of music dedicated to Paulo Freire. And you know, Brazilians like to start things, listening a samba. And then that is the, the idea to start this, uh, this session. Please, Shanae. Sorry, everyone. I have to ask: Is the audio working? Yeah, you no. need to share. You need to share the audio uh, uh, as well in the in the share screen settings. I did share it. Let's see yeah. what happened. The 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 video is great, but not not audio. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's the share sound option on the on the bottom left corner, and you also should check the optimize for video clip. There we go. Angicos, uma pequena cidade no sertão do Rio Grande do Norte, à beira da antiga estrada de ferro, começaram uma revolução. A revolução de Angicos foi iniciada para acabar com o analfabetismo, o problema básico do Estado.
Ajana, can you explain a little bit to the video, please? Sure, of course. So as Sajar mentioned, I've shared with you the link for the song if you'd like to listen to it again later. Um, the lyrics are in Portuguese, as you could see. So if you'd like to learn a little bit about Portuguese, you can try to, to read along. And it's a, this song was a celebration that these two artists wrote together. And it was performed actually during, during a carnival in Brazil, right, Sergio? And it was a theme for a um, Samba school here in Brazil. And they decided to celebrate the life of Paulo Freire then because he was such an important educator here in Brazil. And at the beginning of the, the clip, you could see there was, um, there were some scenes from Angicos, which is a city where Paulo Freire did one of his most famous projects of alphabetization of people over there. And um, it was one, a very successful project. And in the end, the government did many video clips to use as propaganda at the time. And we still have this footage saved. So those clips are from then. And then you can see that in the video, you have a little bit of the singers and a little bit of those scenes from uh, this shooting. Sergio, would you like to talk a little bit about Paulo Freire's thought? Yeah. Well, we organized some uh, concepts from Freire to start this presentation. And just four or five slides uh, to go deeply in the thought of Freire. The first one is education is a political act. For Freire, uh, it's impossible to have a neutral, a neutral education. Education is a political act in its objectives in the way that when you organize your um, program of education, you need to know what you want, in what way you are organizing your uh, process of education. In, in the logic of market, for instance, or you are organizing your education to uh, defend human rights or to uh, to uh, propose more and more uh, conditions of democracy in uh, in your country or in your life or in something like this. But in the same time, uh, you have in the way that you program your education, uh, there is insight a political uh, means that that is if you think about democracy it's impossible to do one education in a authoritarian way in a vertical way you need to practice in the same time you are educated uh, a way to be democratic in the same time uh, you can find a political uh, performance when you think uh, about the values that you propagate in your um, in your education, in the kind of education that you are doing. Not it's important to say not a a, a party a political part education. He. Uh, he is thinking about education as part of the life of the people. Education in school, education out the school, but not they are not thinking a political part when they say that education is a political act. Please, Shemaine. One important, another important thing that. Uh, Freire say is the, the, import, the importance of dialogue in the education. Freire say, no one knows everything and no one knows nothing. 
No one educates anyone and no one educates themselves alone. People educate each other, mediated by the world. That means they agree that it's impossible uh, to have only one side of the education. The process of education is, uh, is, uh, is building by dialogue, by dialogue uh, together with educator and, uh, and the students. Nobody liberates, can you return please? Nobody liberates anybody else and nobody liberates themselves all alone. People liberate themselves in fellowship with each other. This is the same in the way that people are doing in this society and not only in this school. Uh, education does not change the world. Education changes people. People change the world. If the education alone does not change society, without it, neither does society change. Okay, a second. It is essential to close the gap between what is said and what is done. So that at given moment, your speech is your practice. It is a very important thing in the thought of Freire that to close the theory and the practice and to bring the practice inside of the process of education in the way that you need to reflect this practice by theory and then return to the practice in the way to change the society, to change the way that you stay in the world. When education is not the liberation, the dream of the oppressed is to become the oppressor. This is the same in the way that they insist in the idea that it's impossible to be, to have a neutral education. Okay. Uh, just some slides about the sort of Freire, because I'm a, I'm a researcher in the field of adult education. And in Brazil, a long time I research, my researches uh, were in adult education. And I made two or three state of the arts in adult education. And what I, in uh, my finds is, it's quite difficult to find another uh, theoretical concept uh, from other people and not in Freire. Every uh, research or the most important research in Brazil have Paulo Freire as the most important theor theoretical in the field of adult education. And then my, uh, and the team of uh, research, the preoccupation of this team of education is to, uh, to research another uh, theoretical in uh, adult education. And then uh, when I was in the, the International Co Council of Adult Education, I had the opportunity to, to travel um, in Europe many times. And, in, and I knew that uh, there is a grounded program in adult education as part of a European community lifelong learning program. And then I take this in my head and say, well, I need to know Grundvik. In the same time, uh, many reference about the folk high schools or the popular education or the adult education in Scandinavian and Northern Europe. And uh, in the same time, I 
new, the first confiteria, the conference, the International Conference of Adult Education took place in the International People's College in Ensenor, uh, in Denmark, and then this is the same uh, in my head. And then uh, finally, uh, um, some scholars that uh, research Brunswick thoughts and did comparison, uh, some comparison uh, with Paulo Freire, Dewey, Gandhi, and Tagore in the way that you have uh, a comparative education. Ashok, one of our friends who stay here, is one that made a very interesting uh, research and Clay Warren in the United States as well. Well, this is the background of the research. And Janaina, so in, can in you trying to, uh, yeah, please. In trying to, to find out about more theoreticals in the adult education field, um, Sedra started, stayed with this uh, with his ideas in mind. And then we found one Brazilian author who mentioned Confi, and then I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this, probably the entire presentation, and the folk high schools in a book called uh, Educação Supletiva, Educação de Adults in 1938. And then in a book of dialogues with Miles Horton, Freire mentions Horton's lecture, Confi's ideas in North America, influences and parallels at a workshop on group in Denmark in 1983. And there is a possibility that Freire was there present. We weren't able to uh, be sure of this information, but there's a possibility that he was there. And Sergio found these two places uh, being like, mentioned. So we thought it would be a good idea to maybe come up with a research team and start um, studying this to see if, um, if maybe their ideas were similar, if, there, if we could find maybe parallels between the two thinkers, if there were other people who studied this before us. And what we found out was that it was very hard to find material on Grundtvig in different languages that weren't Danish. We found some material in English at that time. It was 2016, 2017 when we started uh, looking for material. And at that time, there were much less uh, there was much less published material in, in English than we have today. Nowadays, you probably know that the Folk High School Association with Sarah, they organized very beautiful publishing material and it's in English and Danish. So it's a, a really good material if you're, if you're researching. I really recommend it. But at that time, we still didn't have it. We had some books. We had Ashoka's book, as Sergio mentioned, and we only found one uh, reference in Portuguese, which is this one. I have the link here, and then if you can, if you read Portuguese and if you'd like to, uh, to read a little bit about it, it's from a Portuguese um, researcher, and it was the only thing that we found in Portuguese studying Comfy and the folk high schools, the Danish folk high schools in Portuguese. So this was our first hurdle, I think, in the research. It was really hard to find uh, material for us to study. But we, we, this made us even more interested, I think, that um, from, this re from this hardship, we became even more interested in finding more about Confi, about his life, about the folk high schools, and we kept moving on with the research. So we decided um, to, to study mainly in order to broaden the theoretical references about youth and adult education, to disseminate the work and the thoughts of the Danish thinker Gompi over here in Brazil and in Latin America, where we couldn't find so much about him, to draw parallels between Gompi's and Freire's thoughts, and to conduct a case study of contemporary experiences on non-formal education in Brazil and in Denmark. So this is the case studies I mentioned earlier. Um, when we started our research, we immediately found many similarities on facts that left a mark on both thinkers' lives. When we thought about Kunfik and Freire and we read about their lives, we discovered that they both were raised in Christianity and they had this and they had this um, 
and this, this spiritual part of their lives was very was a common um, theme. They followed their lives with the values proclaimed by Christianity, and but with a doctrine that brought the Christian faith closer to the cultures in which they were immersed. So it wasn't uh, something that we we will talk about afterwards. The Freire calls banking education. It wasn't something that was dislocated. It was something that went very close to the cultures of the people that they were immersed, and that that it also came really close to the reality lived by the populations with whom they worked. So it was something that they lived in their everyday lives. It wasn't something separate. They both had a nurturing childhood and their parents and their family, their families were very nurturing and they supported their work and gave them security to face some very difficult moments that they lived when they were young. They also had very differentiated behavior during their first years of their lives. They really acquired this pleasure for reading because it wasn't something obligatory, but it was perceived as something that was linked to their everyday to their everyday problems, something that was linked to their culture and to the to the places that they lived in, to the people that they lived with. They both criticized traditional school but defended a renewed school. Freire was an advocate for critical education, um, contrary to what he called banking education, the one that I mentioned before, while Grunfig was concerned with a different education from what he called the school of death. So they both understood that there was a kind of school that was traditional and there was a school of death or a banking education school, which wasn't very uh, interesting for people's lives. That wasn't really educating for people's lives. They believed that a renewed school would be better uh, so people could live in a society, so people could uh, learn throughout their entire lives, as we're going to talk a little bit uh, further on. They both were persecuted for their ideas, but they both were able to produce a very large social impact where they lived and in different places of the world as well. Well, <clears throat> we take this category of analysis based on, on Freire and Grunfig. We try to put together what, what is common uh, in both. And we think we need to uh, observe in the case studies that we viewed, uh, we did in Brazil and in, in, in Dinamarca. The subject situated in their historical moment in a constant learning process, individual, individual and collective, conceived as beings of unfinished knowledge, cultural and creation. The idea of lifelong learning. Uh, Second, let me close here. The idea to put together and to close reflection and experience, theory and practice in the education process. The idea is not to be only theoretical experience, but to have practical things to confront um, the conditions of this way to organize the, the, the practice, uh, to organize the education. And then the first one is, a lifelong learning process. The second one is to close as much as it's possible the reflections and the experience, the theory and the practice. Can you move? Jenna? Jenna? Travo? It seems like Janaina has some it's issues. Freezing. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can change this. 
Tá? She, she said in my WhatsApp, he's finished the light in his home. Oh. <laughs> she's uh, trying to contact in the by cell phone. Okay. Let me if I have uh, can, can you proceed with the presentation or do you yes, have it? Yes. You could send it to me, sir. Oh, I have it actually. I, I, maybe I can I have, find it and share it. I have it here. Let okay. If I can. So while waiting, we had a question in the chat asking what is banking education? So a, a concept I think is really uh, central to Paulo Freire. So yeah. the, the bank, would you put a few words on the banking education, Sergio? What is mean, what yeah. meant with that concept? Yeah, one moment, I'm trying to find it. Oh, I can try. So banking okay. education is, uh, is uh, the thought of that you can deposit knowledge, like you deposit money into a bank so that you can just, you know, deposit the knowledge into the students' heads. Yeah. So that's why you compare it to Grundvi's uh, school of death, because that's also like kind of just transferring knowledge. Yeah? Is that more or less? I will try to share here. Oh. It's okay? Yes? Yes, thank you. Okay. Third, the enlightenment from Grundvik and the awareness to Freire is the primordial, the primordial meaning of the education for the engagement in the process of participation and transformation of the context of social in injustice. That means the same that I said is impossible to have a neutral education, both are worrying and to have a critical uh, education that made people to engage in social uh, questions and to transform this injustice social uh, conditions. The centrality of popular cultures as the matrix of education for the exercise of freedom and active participation in social and political life. Uh, popular cultures are inside of the thought in both uh, educators. Grundvik, when he tried to risk it, to put uh, all the historical uh, culture of uh, the society, and in the same of um, Paulo Freire, when he started to the process of uh, literacy, taking the, uh, the cultural questions or taking the questions from the people to start the process of literacy, taking the words to start the process of uh, the, the education or the literacy process. User, uh, horizontality between the educator and students, dialogue and authentic communication, communication as fundamental assumptions of popular education practice. That means dialogue, but in the same time, uh, to listen to students to listen the practice of these students, to listen the culture of these students and to exchange knowledge in the same process of education. Uh, the educator learn by the students and the same the students learn by the educators and you have uh, the exchange of knowledge in dialogue, in process of dialogue in the same part of, uh, uh, of uh, education process. Well, 
the criteria to 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 find uh, the case studies. Oh, I'm sorry. Is we find and we try to find experience in popular education explicitly guided by the thoughts of Grundig, Grundig and Freire, and in the same time experience in no formal education. What we call no formal education is not a, a scholar, a system, a scholar systems in each country, but uh, no formal education with high intentionality on the part of education and learnings. And in the same time, uh, with uh, some inst institutional uh, organization, uh, even when of low intensity. We use Eli Gani and Julius Hober to, to organize this. Let me see, I have some. Sorry, everyone, I have a power outage. Oh, you're my returning. Neighborhood. <laughs> I am using my, my cell phone internet here, and let's see how long my notebook battery lasts. But um, I think this part is me, right, Sergio? Yeah, please, continue. Uh, you, I think and I have welcome. to change this slide. <laughs> I think uh, it's still in the categories of analysis slide. You? Um, tem que mudar de slide, Sérgio. Acho que ainda está travado no categorias de análise. Eu acho que eu já mudei. Quer que eu... O Zoom tem dado esse, esse bug. É, eu já vi acontecer em outras reuniões. Quer que eu tento compartilhar? Você, esse aqui está no quê? Ainda está em... I'm sorry, people. Está no Enlightenment. No Enlightenment? Está no Enlightenment. Nada, Nada parece. Uh -uh. I said, uh, can you, can you see, uh, uh, I move the slides or not? It's, can I, um, I don't know if Sarah, Paul or you no. are here. <clears throat> it's not. Um, it's not moving? No. No. I've been encountering this this thing in Zoom. I don't now, I'm not sure why it's now it is now it is. Oh yeah, now it worked. Funcionou, Sergio. Mas eu fechei so, um. Okay, vai lá. Official. Uh, so we did three case studies, as Sergio mentioned, and um, the first one was a summer school format from the Ecumenical Center for Services on Evangelization and Popular Education that has existed in Sao Paulo since 1982. And this is this was a summer school. So very quickly, the main things that we found, and here are some pictures for you to get to know it a little bit better. Uh, we were looking for some of the categories that Sergio mentioned. So Sergio, next one, if you please. Okay. The second one, oh, ah. Uh, so we found out that this summer school from CESEP was based on the pillars of popular education, ecumenism, art, community work, and ethics of care, like welcoming, health, self-care, and all these other concepts. Also, the pedagogical materials were very interesting. They had textbooks and also songbooks, like we found in many of the folk high schools. Uh, it has the character of a permanent celebration, alternating information, sociological and theological analysis with experiences and, and artistic practices, as you can see from the picture. And the last one, Sergio. Now? Uh, Pajipruch. It also uses communication media to broaden the impact of the event. So they use social media to talk to people, invite them to come to the summer school. It had value, it valued the experiences and knowledge of the participants. So many times the teachers and the educators would ask for the participants to bring their knowledge to the classroom. It provided authentic coexistence in diversity, including religious diversity. And um, the coordination and monitoring carried out 
continuous planning and evaluation. So every day they would have these uh, meetings for evaluation and planning of the next days based on the experiences that they had on that day. Okay, the second case is the political training of the militants of rural loneliness movement, the MST. Uh, uh, this is a, a big movement in Brazil and a very important movement movement uh, in rural Londoners in Brazil and in Latin America. Uh, in international way, it's a Via Campesina movement. Uh, the training space, this uh, school, Florestan Fernandes, of a great re relevance in the organization of rural and urban social movement in Latin America. Uh, it was uh, created by the Londoners Workers Movement as a resid residential formative space for, space for militants and leaders in the struggle for social transformation. Um, you can see people here in the left side, a group of uh, students, and in the right, you can see the, the residential uh, buildings when people stay with, during the, the, the program of uh, the, the students. Um, they normally, uh, the result of the research show that Freudian popular education is a fundamental experience of the formative process of the MST grassroots militants. And they combine is the principle of uh, socialist pedagogy like Pistrak and uh, Makarenko uh, and creates a particular form of organization derived from its own experience and the need to articulate with local cultures and realities. Well, these both are um, case studies in Brazil uh, following the thoughts of trade. And now, Janaina. So our last case study where the Folk High Schools in Denmark and our first contact was with the Association of Folk High Schools in Denmark. So Sarah was the one who received us and talked to us um, before we visited the Folk High Schools. Sergio was there on an academic mission in 2018 to prepare and to meet and to study a little bit. And then we came back in 2019 to do the case studies. So Sarah um, talked to us and for a long time before we could choose where to go and what would be the best schools for us to visit. And we ended up going to two different schools. One was, I'm sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this too. It's Vandehoop or Vandehoop or something like that. And the other one is the <laughs> IPC, the International Peace People's School. And we stayed for about a week in each school and we stayed um, residentially there. We participated in the classes, in the chores, in the activities that they had there. We also interviewed many of the teachers, the students, and also the directors in each school. And we found out uh, that many of the categories that we had studied before were there present in their practical way. So as we talked about before, um, for both uh, Freire and Grunfeck, it was so important that theory and practice weren't separated, that they worked together. And when we visited the folk high schools, we had this experience. We could see that they had all this theory, but it was in practice during the classes, during the activities outside classes. When students were talking to teachers, we could see that they every day used dialogue between teachers and directors and students. We could see that they every day worked together as a community. We could see that they were worried about um, life outside of school, about their civic life, about the, uh, the importance of their presence politically, as in people who could vote, who could ask for their rights, who could ask for environmental rights and everything. So um, 
It was a very wonderful experience. We really recommend it if you can to visit the Folk High Schools or to study there. <laughs> I think you know it more than we do. And we found all of these categories were present there. I think we have a summary of all the categories, right, Sergio? Yeah. Finally, the last uh, slide. We try to put uh, to find similarity of the concepts in in, in sorts of Grunewald and Frey. The first one is the criticisms of the bank education and the school of debt uh, against the education to awake the popular voice, form of democratic personality. Both are very critical about the, the, the traditional schools and try, but they support the schools. They are not against the schools. They support an, another kind of a school, more linked to the uh, popular voice, more linked to the idea of democratic personality, more linked to the idea to prepare people to uh, try to live in society in uh, a democratic way. Second, uh, humanization, humanization awareness, enlightenment. The, uh, to do this, you need to have uh, a very strong process to awareness people. Uh, and you can do this, emphasize the, or the orality, the living world, the or horizontal dialogue, the mutual learning, the communication. All there. In the same time, the idea of the education for civic and political participation and the education rooted in popular culture. These five things uh, are uh, the, simil the similarity that we find in both concepts. Uh, look in the practice of the three case studies. Well, uh, next step, we try to disseminate the finds in Brazil, in special uh, the Grundvik ideas. And uh, we try to, in, in this step to try to, to, to study in other countries uh, how Grundvik's influence uh, stay. And third, we are uh, collaborating uh, with the Global Network for Folk High School Research. Uh, this is the team research. This is our contact. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to pass very fast. Uh, because we don't have much time to to expose all the the, the research that we did, and the, what I I don't have the the question I can pass for you, Sara. Oh, to I do. Oh. Ah, Hold okay. On. Please. Acho que você tem que fechar aí, Sérgio, para conseguir compartilhar. Tá bom. Você já voltou a luz, hein? Não voltou, não, mas eu estou na bateria. <risos> ok. Só a Maria que está so entendendo. Now... <risos> <risos> now we are going to have some group work. I think Sarah and Yufan will explain it a little bit, but for that, we thought about some questions that will guide us into the group work, and those questions will be, in what ways do you experience that education is addressing civic and democratic education? in your own institution, for example. Can you see an unfulfilled potential? How do enlightenment and awareness lead to processes of participation and transformation in contexts of social injustice, as described by Freire and Grunfeld both? Are there other concepts and theories that could describe such, sorry, such democratic learning processes? So I think, 